The time by Sajikor Life is 7 o'clock. Tonight in CVM News at 7, pundits won't reset on procurement processes, death on school grounds, a fatal shooting at St. Mary High, and CPFSA intervenes to ensure safety of eight U.S. teen boys. Also this evening, environmental concerns arise over Montego Bay's pinnacle development. In the business report, Sibony Group rebranded, while in sports, Team Jamaica sets off for Carifta Games. From Kingston, Jamaica, this is CVM News at 7. I'm Stephen McHugh. And I'm Carolyn Brown. Thanks so much for joining us on this Holy Thursday, March 28, 2024. Now, on Wednesday, CVM News brought you the breakdown and reactions to one of two Auditor General reports tabled in Parliament earlier this week. Tonight, we continue, this time taking a look at losses at the Financial Services Commission, FSC. Our reporter, Ramon Gordon, gauged the reactions. In the second of two damning reports tabled in Parliament on Tuesday, the Financial Services Commission, FSC, faces scrutiny over what some have called significant financial mismanagement. The 22-page special audit revealed startling revelations. For most among them, a staggering $163 million loss incurred during a conference back in 2017. We want to call for a thorough investigation into these issues and we want to advocate also for reforms to prevent similar incidents from happening in the future. That's opposition spokesperson, economist Dr. Andre Houghton. He was reacting to the findings, which also revealed that the FSC not only failed to recoup $4.7 in statutory obligations owed by a former executive, but also made unauthorized payments, totaling almost $4 million Jamaican dollars to a consultant without a valid contract. The report delves deeper into the FSC's operations, uncovering a litany of procurement irregularities. These include approving payments without substantiating evidence of work and a lack of proper procedures for contract approval. The FSC has also created or filled vacancies without proper approval. I want to emphasize the need for greater accountability and also adherence to the regulatory standards. This highlight is not just for us to say a blame game, but for us to put measures in place that Jamaica can move sufficiently forward. The Auditor General recommends the FSC resolves outstanding issues with the Finance Ministry regarding recruitment and hiring. Additionally, she suggests seeking recovery of the overpayment of $4.76 million in statutory obligations from the executive mentioned earlier. But beyond that, President of the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce, JCC, Philip Ramson, says it may be time to revisit the procurement processes blamed for the latest multi-million dollar taxpayer loss. Look at how difficult it is in terms of getting these procurements done because of all of the, the regulations. It can hamper and delay a lot of things. I wouldn't cast the whole system as being inefficient. I just think that there are areas where, where we're seeing people taking advantage and we need to, to address those. Ramon Gordon for CVM News. Also from the news desk, tragedy now looms over a St. Mary High School after a man was shot and killed on the compound. Four others were also injured during the incident. The perpetrators remain at large. Here is Celine Campbell with more details. Death on a school ground. It happened sometime after 8 on Wednesday evening when a verbal confrontation took a deadly turn. The netball court stained with blood an indelible mark that even when washed clean will stain the minds of witnesses. 28-year-old Fabian Needham, better known as Kili Kili, left home to attend the St. Mary High School after sports celebration. But as soon as the event ended, bloodshed. There was a dispute amongst men on the main road in Highgate. As a result, one of the men threw a bottle at a group of other men and of course those men retaliated chased him onto the compound he ran onto the compound where he was shot and unfortunately four other persons were shot and injured during that incident 
Reports from the Highgate Police are that of the four men injured, two were grazed by bullets in the leg, another to his rear, and the fourth to his chest. The fourth man remains hospitalized in serious condition, while the perpetrators remain at large. Meanwhile, the police have partnered with the school to offer support in restoring some level of normalcy to the space environs. This treats with this incident treats with students being involved, a school compound. The students have been traumatized, the teachers have been traumatized. As a result, we have reached out to the principal of the institution and our community relations team will be providing support in that of guiding the process for counseling, guiding the process for intervention where necessary. Meanwhile, Port Maria's Mayor Fitzroy Wilson is pleading with residents to rid the parish of perpetrators while adding criminals continue to bring the parish into disrepute. Not too long ago, St. Mary was one of the safest parish in Jamaica. It was one of the parish who boasts the lowest murder rate. Of late, we have realized that migrants, uh, migrating um, persons from other parishes come into parish and it has created mayhem. Somebody must have seen something. Somebody must have heard something. Somebody must know one of those persons or every one of them. I am imploring everyone to work with the police force in this matter. As at March 23, St. Mary has recorded four murders. Celine Campbell for CVM News. The Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, has intervened to ensure the safety of eight U.S. teenagers between 14 and 18 years old at the Atlantis Leadership Academy in Treasure Beach, St. Elizabeth, amidst allegations of abuse. The CPFSA reports that the alleged abuse of the males came to light during an unannounced welfare check on February 8, 2024, conducted with representatives from the U.S. Embassy in Kingston. During the visit, signs of abuse and neglect were reportedly observed, leading to the immediate removal of the teens from the facility. On February 9, the matter was presented in the local family court, which granted an interim order for the CPFSA to retain custody of the children while further investigations are conducted. Lorette Adams-Thomas, CEO of the CPFSA, shares measures her agency has taken to safeguard the well-being of the children. The children have undergone medical assessments and are generally in good health receiving ongoing care. This includes specialized psychotherapeutic support and occupational therapy. We are also collaborating with the International Social Services, that's ISSUSA, for the safe reintegration of these teens with their families. The CPFSA will return to court on the 3rd of April to provide an update on the home studies being conducted and to receive any further instructions from the court. The case has been referred to the Criminal Investigations Branch, CIB, of the JCF in St. Elizabeth for a separate investigation. Seven of the teens are now residential child care facilities. In residential child care facilities, the 18-year-old who aged out of the children's court's jurisdiction was safely returned to the United States in February 2024 in coordination with his family and the U.S. Embassy. Now, we're still about two months away from the official start of summer, but already many have been complaining about the heat. Well, our reporter Natalia Clark spoke with a sustainable development expert who explains the rising temperature is the effect of climate change and urges stakeholders to ramp up efforts to combat the issue. More than likely, when you left home this morning, you were greeted, embraced almost immediately by the warm rays of the sun. They seemed to almost be strangling you as you go about your day's tasks. Well, expect a lot of that this year, as experts believe there is a high probability that 2024 will be another record hot year. Locally, experts are sounding the alarm for more to be done by every Jamaican to slow the effects of climate change. To the government, Professor of Caribbean Sustainable Development at the University of West Indies, Mona, Anthony Clayton, shares two suggestions. The first, facilitate the construction of energy-efficient buildings. Change the building codes. 
and get people like the uh, National Housing Trust to get involved so that the buildings that we are putting up from now on should really be much more energy efficient, ideally should be net zero. This, he says, is not far-fetched, as the Uemona is home to one such building, the first of its kind in the Caribbean. And if you live in one of these buildings, instead of getting a light bill every month, you get a check from the power company. Now, who wouldn't want that? This is actually a very economically attractive option, and the cost of designing and putting up a net zero building is coming down all the time because we're getting better at doing it. Professor Clayton calls on the government to further contribute to a solution by removing the import duty on electric vehicles. It would help to reduce this country's need to import hydrocarbons, which is one of our major expenditures of foreign exchange. So if we zero rate um, importation of electric vehicles, we can accelerate the transition over to electric vehicles, take a lot of the um, gasoline and, and diesel engines off the roads and reduce our energy import bill. This, he adds, improves air quality, which in return could reduce heart diseases and asthma in Jamaica. Now, while he admits countries like China and India contribute more significantly to the problem, the expert surmises Jamaica's role should not be understated. Professor Clayton warns that while the situation is a genuinely critical, it's not a matter for despair as we can still save the world by playing our part. Natalia Clark for CVM News. As Jamaica and in particular the western region continues to battle crime and violence, some argue it's time Jamaicans played their part in advancing the country's safety. Mayor of Sablamar, Danry Delancey, raised these concerns in a municipal meeting on Wednesday. Trisha Gay Kelly reports. The 2030 vision to make Jamaica the place to live, work, raise families and do business lies in the balance as crime engulfs the nation. But one authority figure, Mayor of Savannah Lamar, Danry Delancey, is not waiting for things to worsen but rather calling on additional forces. Delancey at a municipal meeting on Wednesday impressed upon residents living in Westmoreland to join in the fight against crime. Crime affects everybody. Be that directly affects you know, or directly affect me know. But yes, it indirectly affects us. The most recent killings occurred between Friday afternoon and Saturday night with the murders of 39-year-old bar operator Teddy Parchment, who was gunned down outside his bar along Marchmont Road, 31-year-old Randy Richardson, who was killed in Amity District, and an unidentified male who was discovered shot to death along Rickett Street in Savannah Lamar. The mayor is appealing to citizens to be a part of the solution and not the problem. What we can do, whether it be to speak to someone, this is going down the wrong road. Right? What do we can do? You know, when we smile, we just prove it. The parish is now the second most murderous in the island. Since the start of 2024, a total of 24 persons have been slain in Westmoreland. However, this is 11 murders fewer than the parish of St. James, which heads the island with 35 murders. The JCF crime statistics also reveal that 251 persons have been murdered across the island in a little under three months. And with the Area 1 Police Command having the two parishes with the most recorded murders, police presence has been beefed up across sections of Westmoreland and St. James. Trisha Gee Kelly, CVM News. CVM News at 7 returns in just a moment. Apply. Cook it up and make 
go steam it Fresh so me need it Tilapia a real fish Cook it up and go roast it Farm fresh so me need it Tilapia a real fish Go smart at the best part Food for thought so me up it eat smart Easy catch Fully net A tilapia so you don't know what's next Cook it up and go fry it Fresh so me need it Tilapia a real fish Bring home the best in fresh water fish High content of vitamin B3 protein and potassium Tilapia simple healthy delicious Introducing Rum Stripe by Red Stripe. White rum, real fruit flavor with a refreshingly great taste. A rum mixed drink like you've never had it before. It's a party in a can. Rum Stripe tastes the rum revolution. Welcome back and thanks so much for staying with us. Well, Jamaicans can expect to see changes in the capital, which the Prime Minister says is due some restructuring. But as more citizens venture to Kingston for business and residential reasons, there's little to no space to accommodate them. Trisha Gay Kelly picks up that story. While acknowledging the idea that more Jamaicans are still searching for affordable housing in the capital, Prime Minister Andrew Holness explains Kingston will first require a redesign. This as he addressed stakeholders at the new vineyard at Dean Redevelopment's ribbon cutting ceremony on Wednesday. Our architecture must reflect a sense of who we are, some form of modernity, but it must also be aspirational. It must, our architecture must reflect what we aspire to be. Holness says this is to facilitate the increasing number of Jamaicans who desire to live in the city. But if there are no facilities to accommodate them, that cannot happen. First of all, I think we want convenience. Everybody wants to be close to work close to entertainment and uh, they want to be close to amenities, hospitals, gyms and so forth. He adds the aim is to create proper spaces that will limit the need for constant repairs in various areas. It can't be just poorly designed, shabbily constructed buildings that are, you know, just put together to extract a profit. And then five years later, you know, the, the paint has faded and stripped. The building is cracking. The people who occupy it are uncomfortable because there was no thought about ventilation, how garbage will be disposed, these kinds of things. Convenience, reliable infrastructure, architecture. The three key development elements listed by the Prime Minister for the new version of Kingston promised. Trisha Gay Kelly, CVM News. And over in the West, construction has begun on the Pinnacle, a lavish, lavish residential resort aiming to revolutionize luxurious living in Montego Bay with a $350 million investment. While the project is being hailed a potential tourism game changer for Jamaica, concerns arise about environmental risks due to its location. Ronaldo Adams has this report. If the drawings are anything to go by, the pinnacle development in the Reading Peninsula in Montego Bay, St. James, will be surrounded by a stunning nature reserve with what promises to be a unique living experience that embodies the essence of Jamaica. Well, that's the plan. But what impact will this development have on the environment? Executive Director of the Montego Bay Marine Park Trust, Hugh Shim, warns of consequences if construction breaches occur. If they stick to the environmental assessment and the plan and the recommendations of it, we shouldn't, it, the impact should not be that great. However, um, if for example there are breaches, meaning while construction is going on, if there's runoff into the lagoon from the, the debris and the construction, then it definitely will be a problem. And if some of the mangroves are, are destroyed, which I think there are measures to prevent that, then there definitely will be some impact here. 
Shim adds he is concerned that the lagoon will lose its protective nature over time. In terms of filtering, having clean water, having the shores protected when there are storm surges, and also stop, stopping runoffs from, from land because the mangroves serve as, as um, filters. So if those mangroves begin to die and the filter feeders, which are the clams and so forth, start to die, then the water quality would definitely deteriorate. Meanwhile, Arlene McKenzie, a resident of Bogue Hill, which is situated directly above the Pinnacle site, says though she appreciates the development, she is very concerned. It's on the wetlands. If you sit where I sit, when I look over at the sea, the Pinnacle site is located in what would have been swamp, marshland or mangrove forest. This is a concern for me. The, my biggest concern is that this development has not shown us any EIA, any environmental impact assessment that you can say, silence me. Mackenzie also raises concerns about infrastructure issues, such as inconsistent water and electricity supply, as well as the management of sewage and its potential impact on residents. Renalda Adams for CVM News. And stay with us for our business segment coming up after the break. Many of my schoolmates have an unhealthy diet, especially at school, and now 23% of them are overweight and are obese. And so one less sugary drink at my school may mean one friend less or two or three at risk of cavities or diabetes. And if we're served less foods high in saturated fats, sugar, and sodium, it may reduce our risk from obesity, heart disease, and high blood pressure. The solution is simple, right? Act now. Let's get unhealthy foods and beverages out of our schools. A message from the Heart Foundation of Jamaica and partners. What's your story? What's your sign? Your dreamers. Date nights at home or making fun family meals. Nothing adds more flavor than a recipe for togetherness. Barilla, true Italian pasta made from drum wheat. Barilla always cooks al dente. Perfection every time. Looking for healthier options? Try our Barilla gluten-free spaghetti and Barilla whole wheat penny pasta today. Barilla, a sign of love. Available in stores island-wide. Distributed by Mass Distribution. Welcome back. Time now for our business report with Andrew Laidley. In the business report today, less than a year after IEC Energy Company acquired Sibony Group, the company has changed its name to Innovative Energy Group Limited. The company will now trade under the new listing or trading symbol, Energy. The name change ceremony was held at the Jamaica Stock Exchange on Wednesday. This name change from Sibony Group Limited to Innovative Energy Group Limited represents a critical step in the journey, as it is a transformational shift 
from a once dormant real estate holding company to an innovative, revolutionary company with hopes to enhance energy generation and distribution landscape in Jamaica. Lead broker Barita Investments is pointing out that Innovative Energy Group has plans to expand in the region, a move which could redound to the benefit of new investors. They are looking at potentially serving clients in North America, Central America, and the Caribbean. So what that does, it potentially presents an opportunity for geographical diversification through that single stock. At the same time, the Barita Investments Banking Vice President said the rebranding is an opportunity for new investors to come on board. At Barita Investments Limited, we believe that this reverse takeover and name change creates a significant opportunity for Innovative Energy Group to further educate the investing public about who it is, what it does, its strategic imperatives, and with that knowledge, the public will be able to benefit from possible future opportunities presented by our ever-growing capital markets. With that, Chairman Nigel Davy disclosed plans to go back to the market to raise capital in short order. Barita is managing this process, but I will hasten to say that this capital raise will be via a combination of various instruments to include, among other things, an APO, convertible preference shares, on our rights issue. We are guided by our broker and, of course, our expert directors in this area. He noted the company is pursuing new ventures, which it will make public soon. We are actively pursuing several other projects, transactions, joint ventures, and strategic partnerships. As soon as we have attained a stage where it is prudent to make public pronouncements, we will. And that was your business report. I'm Andrew Laidley. Royal Palm Estate. Probably to, to, to break into a sanky would, would help to ease the pain and anguish that we are feeling. You can stay here. That doesn't seem appropriate. Besides, Julia would have a fit. Come here to me. They're just going to have to learn who's in charge around here. There's no shame about sickness unless it's something like AIDS. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to pre present my partner, Miss Tracy Holness. I would like a nice woman to be my wife. Mr. Levy will now read the last will and testament of Mr. Edward George Blackburn. Jamaica's favorite drama, Your Guilty Pleasure. Keep up with the Blackburns this Sunday at 9 p.m. Brought to you by MIB Insure. Switch to MIBinsure.com today and save serious money. Truth is, HIV affects everyone. Truth is, avoiding care leads to a weaker immune system. That means you could get really sick. The truth is, the hardest pill to swallow isn't the medication. It's the problems that follow when you don't take them. Let's get through this together. Remain in care. You can live life to the fullest with HIV. And that's the truth. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Has begun. I've traveled the seas, I've traveled the waters Once I was weak, now I'm much stronger I've worked in the sun, look what I've become I've conquered the bees, now I'm much greater I've learned from a failure Dedication, discipline and drive Seizing every moment that comes up in this life You know them, the movers, 
the shakers, the people making a difference, who never shy away from a challenge, who are never afraid to dirty their hands, to jump in and get things done, who are never afraid to fail, to take a risk, to learn. You know them and aspire to be like them. And you can, because there's always room for growth.